uh, in your shorts on the side. Impeccable timing. I've turned up in Calpay as Ribble. We're on a recovery ride. So we've done that. I'm here with Red. Hola. Red Walters from YouTube fame. YouTube fame. <laughs> and pro cycling fame, because yeah, he rides for Ribble. We're going to have a look at his bike. <laughs> We've only been riding it since we got to camp. Obviously, it's an aero bike. Obviously, it looks pretty cool. But the standout feature, which I'm sure you may have heard, is the handlebars. Now, you might find yourself asking, how wide are those bars, Red? They're, they're mad narrow. 38? No. 33, uh, center to center. Which, you know, it sounds a bit crazy, but once you're riding it, like, it feels, after a couple of rides, pretty normal. Um, I'm already used to 38, so, yeah, going down to 38. And I'm gonna proper get an aero. It, uh, it fits like a glove, so it feels really nice. Where did you get these, by the way? These track grip things? So, well, funnily enough, I ordered some track grips because I was thinking about do I want bar tape or what am I going to do? I was like, I'll order some track grips, try them out. They didn't come in time before we left the camp, so I just purged them off my track bike. And uh, they fit on, they fit pretty well, actually. Uh, they look all right, they feel, they feel good, so yeah, they're working for me for now. Underneath those, what's the, is it like a grippy bar? Because some of the guys back at the villa are not running any bar tape yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, so you can get, there's like, I, you don't need to have bar tape. They've got like a textured paint type thing, so you can grip it quite well, but I just quite like a, a bit more of a, a handle to, uh, to hold them while I'm sprinting and stuff. So I'm running, slightly controversially, a size small. Um, I quite like a fairly big drop, so for my height it's a bit small, but that's what I'm running. It's about a 53 and a half. Like, How tall are you? Because people will ask. People will ask. I'm 181 centimetres, um, and this is, yeah, like a 53 and a half, 535 mil frame. 172.5 cranks, 53, 39 chain set, 1128 cassette, Shimano, Altegra, Jira, no, what am I talking about? <laughs> Shimano, Altegra, Di2, Mavic 65 SLR wheels on GP 5000s. Those are huge. They are absolutely huge, but I'm so far they've been all right and it's been quite windy. So uh, we've managed, we've managed all right with those. And then to top it off, we've got the ISM PN 3.0 saddle. That's a pretty unusual saddle to put onto a road bike. You see them in triathlon and time trials a lot, don't you? Because it lets you get further forward. What's the reasoning behind that? Yeah, so when I initially switched to them, I was all about like, I really wanted to open up my hip angle. Um, so when I'm getting aero, I still like my hips aren't completely closed off. Um, so that's when I, I started using them like a couple years ago. But funnily enough, this team, like there's like half the riders are on ISM. So it's just funny that I think a lot of people have a similar mindset of like getting forward, getting aero and like being able to open up the hip angle and all that sort of stuff. Um, and obviously like there's less, pre less pressure points when you're sitting right on the front. That was like the main problem with doing the similar position with other saddles, you end up just like sitting right on the nose of it, which is not comfy. Interesting that nearly all of you guys are riding your deep wheels out here. I guess it's quite a good thing to test, especially with the aero frame, just to see how they perform in like windy conditions before using them for the first time in a race, because otherwise you might end up, well, shocked. It's, it's really good to like just practice everything of the race setup. Like we did a few team time trial efforts the other day. The guys are like, just do everything as if it was a race, just to like get everything, you know, aero socks, planning everything, fueling like as well. I think it's also good to just get used to fueling right and doing that for a race. So yeah, we have the full race setup out here. And obviously, you know, it's sunny skies, clean roads. So it's not like you're going to wear out the rotors or, or the rims anytime soon. Why is your left crank? 105. Well, see, this is a result of uh, Google searching power meter and filtering price low to high. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's what we've got. Well, like. if, at least it fits and it's compatible. I mean, if, if it, it works. it's compatible, it works. Uh, yeah. That is so much heavier, you see. So when I try and get the bike over, that it just doesn't want to turn. It's just the one that is so heavy. But, you know, it gets the job. It gets the job done. And you guys have done some fairly big rides over the last three days. So now you're nice and tired. Hopefully you'll be really slow when I join you on the long ride tomorrow. Do you feel like you're getting on form and when is your first race? I'm like quite happy with where I'm at at the moment. Like I'm not, I'm not one to brag, but compared to previous years, like I'm in a really good spot. This is like by far the smoothest run of winter I've had, like not getting ill, just constant hours and getting everything bang on target. Um, my first race is, well, the first race we're doing as a team is Omloop Dorfen. Ruckfen, which is in the Netherlands. Catchy. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a catchy name. Once you get, you say it a few times, it really gets stuck in your head. So that's in the Netherlands on the 13th of March, maybe the 12th, whichever the Sunday is. Um, so I'm hoping to get selected for that, but selection depends kind of on this camp. So we'll find out at the end of this camp who gets selected. And then yeah, off to the Netherlands for a UCI, hopefully. 
And this won't be your first time racing on the continent at all because you've been doing, you did a whole season in France? Yeah, yeah, so last year I spent about five weeks racing in France. Um, so that was more like, not, not quite national level races, but just, yeah, local-ish sort of to medium level races. And then for the second half of the year I was on Huggins Berman. So I got to do a couple of really big races in Belgium, like, uh, what was it, Brussels Cycling Classic. I got to see Remco, who by the way, isn't small. You think of Remco like a small Kleiner guy. He's jacked out of his mind. <laughs> He's absolutely hench. <laughs> so yeah, it's funny seeing people like that in person. But um, yeah, it would just be good to get some like proper big dog racing in the legs again. How does the racing compare over on the continent to the UK? It's so different. Like, obviously it's a higher level, but like the way it's raced is just so, such a different, like mindset. I think the main thing is the control. Like there's teams that will ride for a sprint or ride for whatever a breakaway. In the UK, it's a bit of a free for all. Like you go to a Nat B and you might get four or five from a team, but most of the time it's just like carnage. It's just really different, the control thing. The timing, I think positioning, you have to get in the right position at the right time to, to make the split or make the selection. And it's, uh, yeah, obviously it's a lot harder, bigger fields, that kind of thing. Well, good luck for the season. I'm excited to see what you do with this machine. I forgot one last question. How can people find you on the on the internet? Oh, on the internet, I'm the Redster on YouTube or the underscore Redster on Instagram. This guy makes some of the funniest videos uh, I've ever seen. So 100% link in description. Go there to subscribe to him because, well, I want I want you guys to watch the one where you talk about this bike because oh, yeah. there's something inside that video which I laughed at for like 10 minutes straight. Yeah, and it was great. Is. I wish I had 10% uh, of this guy's creativity. Honestly, subscribe to him. Right. What have you done? <laughs> We've got a Spanish pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I can't breathe. We have a tortilla with uh, Edam, chorizo, and avocado. We've got something else tomorrow. <laughs>